Giving up easy underhooks. Underhooks are dominant grips, grips you should always be searching for for yourself and preventing from being taken on you. Many beginners don't understand the importance of preventing underhooks, or maybe they do, but they lack the discipline to keep their elbows tight to their body. Giving up underhooks can lead to sweeps, passes, pins, and submissions. You need to prioritize not letting people have underhooks. How do you do this? Always keep your elbows close to your body like a T-Rex. These are T-Rex arms. You need to use your T-Rex arms as much as possible to prevent underhooks and prevent head control, which brings us to the next beginner mistake, giving up head control. Head control is another dominant grip. It's an area of your body you can't let people control. Where the head goes, the body must follow, and if your head is controlled, you can't move your body. And if you can't move your body, then you're controlled. You need to never let someone grab your head. In fact, this is one of my number one pieces of advice regarding jiu-jitsu. Never let someone grab your head. How do you do this? Well, just like preventing underhooks, you need to use your T-Rex arms to defend your head. See here, I'm monitoring my opponent's far arm, preventing it from grabbing my head. After I sweep him, I go right to controlling his head. As he wasn't doing anything to stop me, he wasn't using his T-Rex arms, and I hit an easy pass as a result. Not controlling feet when passing. When passing, you need to control the legs, as the legs are the guard but it's specifically the feet that cause the most amount of trouble as the feet are grips. You can't let your opponent grip on you or bad things happen. The way their feet are positioned on you determines what guard that they have you in. Every guard is like this. You can't let people establish a guard. You can't let people move their feet freely. I cover this more in my conceptual passing video. Instead, you must always aim to keep your opponent's feet off of you so they can't use them to sweep you, submit you, or control you. If you prioritize this, I guarantee your guard passing is going to improve substantially. Allowing your grips to pass the center line when passing. Whether you place your grips past the center line yourself or your opponent moves your grips there, having your arm past the center line on your opponent's body when in their guard is nearly always a bad idea. Because without the use of that arm, there's nothing stopping them from taking your back you're more easily off balance and lack the ability to post to stop the sweep. And you open yourself up to submissions like arm bars. You have to make sure that you're gripping on the same side of the body in relation to you and not past their belly button because gripping will prevent them from moving your arm freely. Reaching up. Reaching up from the bottom of dominant positions is going to get you submitted. The best example is mount. You give up an easy arm bar. Not only is it a bad choice that will get you submitted, but it also won't help you escape. It serves no purpose. When you're in bad positions, the goal is to frame, to keep your opponent away, away from advancing to a higher mount, and frame to make space so that you can escape. If you're left without your frames, you screw yourself. Don't reach up. Keep your elbows tight and hands on your opponent's hips so you can escape and defend. Loose turtle. Turtle can be a great tool defensively to avoid a guard pass, a tool to stand up, and a tool to attack from. I like turtle, and just in general, I like turtles. But turtle is only as good as the person using the turtle, and how you transition to turtle. Primarily, the risk of turtle is getting your back taken. And if you get your back taken, it's because you're not preventing grips as you're transitioning, or not preventing grips once you're there. You need to stay tight, just like the solution to the majority of these other mistakes. You can't let them insert their hooks or take a seatbelt grip. You need to avoid them gripping at all, so escaping and attacking is much easier. Open slash loose elbows. You can't let people grip underneath your elbows. That space is sacred. You must protect it. Just like we talked about when giving up easy underhooks or reaching up in a loose turtle, beginners commonly will separate their elbow from their body, giving easy grips to attack and control from. But good jujitsu is all about discipline. Discipline to do is right, even if it's hard. But you can see from these examples, it's not discipline that they're lacking, it's awareness. Like here, my opponent's open elbow gives me the ability to take a Kimura, but then I see the other elbow is open too, so I take an underhook. He gave me two choices on a silver platter. It was just a matter of which way I wanted to attack. Not adjusting base. Base is your ability to stay on the mat. Typically, it'll be your feet or your knees on the mat that provide base. There is a time and place for either, but generally your feet provide better base. When in risk of being swept, your foot on the mat can act as a post to prevent sweeps. Beginners lack the awareness of when to switch from their knees to their feet. Look here, I sweep my opponent the first time as he doesn't adjust, but then I try again and this time he switched from his knee on the mat to his foot on the mat and I'm unable to sweep him as a result. Holding on to subs that aren't there. 
when you attack a submission, you commit your grips to it. But if the submission isn't there and there's no chance of getting a tap, transitioning to a different submission or banning the attack altogether so you can improve grips and position is often a wise choice. Especially guillotines, people hold on to guillotines all the time that aren't there and get von flu choked as a result. But in the air. This could fit into the adjusting base category, but I felt it deserved its own category. The further your butt is from your heels, the worse your base will be. You can more easily be pulled forward and swept in the process. In fact, this is what you should actively be looking for when doing a scissor sweep. Once the butt comes off the heels, it's easy. Same thing with balloon sweeps. If I see your butt in the air, you're going for a ride. Not controlling posture in close guard. This can go both ways for the bottom player and the top player, but it's more of an issue not controlling posture as the top player. If you don't keep the guard player pinned on their back, they can get up. And if they can get up off their back, then they can attack sweeps like hip bump sweeps, 100% sweeps, submissions like kimuras, guillotines, and more. When in the close guard, you need to keep your opponent on their back. Quickly, I'd just like to introduce you to the sponsor today's video, Element. As someone who trains a lot, I had to be extra careful of fatigue and muscle cramps, especially cramps, as it's not a pretty feeling when they catch you mid-roll. You probably know this already because it can take quite some time until the muscle cramps stop. And one of the reasons that this happens is the loss of electrolytes, because as you sweat, which we do a lot in jiu-jitsu, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. And when sodium isn't adequately replaced, that's when the muscle cramps and fatigue kick in. And that's why I started drinking Element. It's a really tasty electrolyte drink that contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, all of which prevent those muscle cramps and fatigue. It also comes with no sugar, no artificial ingredients, none of that junk. And I really like that. It's used by everyone from NBA and NHL players, Olympic athletes, Navy SEALs, Marines, to everyday exercise enthusiasts like moms and dads. And right now, Element is offering my subscribers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or try Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com slash Jordan Teaches. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com slash Jordan Teaches. Opening close guard for no reason. You should open your guard when attacking, as many attacks require you to do so, but to open your guard for no reason and leave it open, you give your opponent the opportunity to pass. Because breaking the close guard is hard, so don't do it for them. Unless you're transitioning to a different guard or attacking, or like I'm doing here, I'm, I'm baiting my opponent by opening it because I want to catch him during the transition. But, but don't just leave it open for no reason or you're going to get passed. Pulling guard without connection of the feet. To control someone, you need your grips on them, your hands and your feet. If you pull guard without your feet on them, you're not controlling them. Here I almost get past because I got lazy and just sat to my butt, but I was able to recover when I got my feet on him. I should have pulled properly or just worked the takedown, but sometimes I don't want to work hard and go for a takedown and that's okay. People need to chill about guard pulling. So if you do pull guard, make sure your feet are connected. It doesn't need to be to the hips, it just needs to be connection of some sort reaching back in close guard. I only have one clip of this, but it's super common. If you reach back, you risk the triangle. This is exactly how my student won this match because his opponent reached back. However, it's not nearly as risky reaching back from a standing position because your opponent's hips are far away from your neck and shoulder, making it quite difficult to reach. So if you're standing, it's usually fine. Sweeping yourself. I see this all the time, beginners sweeping themselves. They're in top position and could fight to stay there, but instead fall to the mat. If you do this, you're just sweeping yourself. In a tournament, you're giving them two points, and in the gym, you're robbing your training partner of a nice sweep. Like here, I really wanted to do a cool X-guard sweep, maybe like this one, but he just fell over, so thanks, Alex. Now, sometimes it can be strategic to fall to a more advantageous position if you know the sweep is inevitable, but this is rare and often not the case. So don't sweep yourself. Make your opponent work for it not finishing or fighting off sweeps. Just because you knock someone over doesn't mean you swept them, you need to actually take top position. Many will do the first part but not prioritize the second part, mostly because they don't know how or they don't understand how important that is. There's two tips that I can give you. One is to control the legs as you finish the sweep, as they need their feet on the mat to get up. You can't stand up without your feet on the mat. If you can, let me know as that'd be pretty cool to witness. Also, prioritize getting your hips higher than your opponent's hips. This is a basic principle to win scrambles and it's very important to understand and prioritize. But remember, you need to prioritize what's right even if it's hard, just like life. 
and not fighting the hands when your back is taken. Listen to Wu-Tang and protect your neck. Jiu-Jitsu as a whole is one big rib fight. Hands are grips. You need to fight the hands when your back is taken, otherwise you're gonna get choked. You don't wanna fight the inner elbow, you wanna fight the hands. Grabbing headlocks. Brand new people especially love grabbing heads. They love headlocks. I'm not talking about cross faces. Cross faces are good, but headlocks aren't a great technique and can lead to your back being taken because you're giving up the underhook. Kesagatami can be a good technique for sure, but it's definitely a risky technique. A risk that I don't recommend beginners take as it's not a risk that I often take for myself. Riding too high in the back. When taking the back, if you're too high in the back, you risk your opponent tripoding, lifting their butt to create a ramp for you to fall off. This is especially the case if you don't have any hooks in, but even with hooks it can be risky. Unless you know what you're doing and have an attack planned. Not taking four points of connection. Your grips are your hands and feet. You need to use them to control others. If you don't have connection with them, then you're not controlling them. If you're not controlling them, then they can move freely. And if they can move freely, then they can easily pass your guard. One of the goals in passing is to break connection of the points of contact, like this example here, taking their feet off me so I can Toriano pass. So it's important to establish that connection as the bottom player. You don't need to do your opponent any favors. You need four points of connection in your guard, each limb. It's very important you use what's available not subscribing to my newsletter. Yeah, yeah, I've duped you by using the 20th mistake to advertise my newsletter, but it's actually super beneficial for anyone of any skill set, but especially beginners. Every week I pack conceptual advice into the newsletters, what I call Jiu-Jitsu theory. You'd be making a mistake not to subscribe. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.